weekend good, Lila? It was fantastic. Good. Too fast, as always. Yeah, sure, right? The weekends, they always feel that way. Nothing new. Mine was good, too. Thanks for asking, Lila. I really appreciate that. <laughs> it was just kind of, I was taking a drink. How was your week? <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll believe you. I'll believe you. All right, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. So uh, my name is Ian. I'm the COO at HD Photo Hub. We've got Lila on with us as well. She's our customer service director. Uh, down at the bottom of the Zoom, you should be able to see the question and answer section. Feel free to ask questions as we go throughout. Uh, Lila will either write your response in there or we'll take some questions at the end and do some screen sharing along with the answers to those as well. Uh, for anybody who's uh, attending the webinar today, you do have the opportunity to get some bonus credits for being here. We appreciate uh, you being here and getting educated on our system. So thank you very much. Uh, any purchase of $120 or more, and we'll get 50 bonus credits on your account. There'll be some instructions on how to get that uh, following up on the webinar. So today we're doing the Power Hour webinar. Super excited about it. We're going to take you guys through the configuration of a brand new business account in one hour and get you ready to be able to take online orders and team members connected and kind of all the all the essentials in place so you can start utilizing the HD Photo Hub system. So we're gonna jump right in. A uh, couple things that you'll see here. So we're in a brand new account. There's no orders, there's no nothing here. This is, it looks just like uh, your account when you first set up. You've got some learning information here and, and really just kind of a starting spot. Now, as you go through and start populating your account, on your dashboard is where you'll see pending orders, uh, new orders, orders that need scheduling, kind of everything that relates to you know what's going on in your business, you're going to find here on the dashboard. Uh, you'll see that there is some branding in this account already. So when you sign up with our uh, business, usually within about 24 hours, you should see your branding uh, comes in and gets populated as well. So you actually don't have to worry too much about setting up your own logo and colors and things. Um, if you already have a website, we'll go to your website and take a look and and get you a brand uh, that matches nicely inside of your HD Photo Hub account. So we're going to start out a little bit uh, of information about this company at home photography, right? Our, our fake example company that we're doing today. So they're a small team. They've got two photographers and the business owner. The business owner is also kind of acting as the admin in this case. And so the first thing that we're going to do as we get started is we're actually going to go to the business page. And down at the bottom uh, of the business page, you'll be able to see team members. We're going to go ahead and create our two photographer team member accounts and get going. <clears throat> so we've got our first team member here. And who is this going to be? This is Steve Shutter. I'm going to cheat and do a little bit of copy and pasting here. So we've got Steve Shutter. We're going to get his email address in here and hit OK. So you'll see that uh, that kind of creates his base account. So we've got a couple more things for a team member that we want to fill out in this case. So we're going to put his address in here. Main reason we're going to do this is it's going to help us when we go to set up service areas. And it's also going to help us uh, as we get ready to uh, also choose uh, like drive time miles. So it'll know how far uh, he'll need to commute to a shoot and be able to set the timing and things up correctly as well. All right, so we've got Steve in here. Let's go ahead and give Steve a profile picture as well. Oop. So you get all ready for these and then you start changing screens. Here's Steve. There we go, we'll get that uploaded. So he's in here, perfect. All right, next up we're going to set up carry and then we'll go in and we'll do uh, a little more a little bit more work inside of their accounts connecting their google calendars so this person is carry camera we'll get carrie's name and her email address you'll notice now down at the bottom that there's an option to actually copy a team member's settings so as you build out um, your business if you have photographers that are established or say you have photographers, um, you've got a handful of photographers that are that are getting paid X or if you've got new photographers that you pay X, you pay other photographers Y. Uh, when you're creating a new team member, you can actually choose to copy the settings of an existing timber, team member. And that'll bring in uh, information about like how much they should get paid when they're uh, completing certain products um, and, and things like that. Basically everything but their service area as far as a configuration goes. 
Um, so service area, Google Calendar configuration, those will be unique to the new team member that you create. But it's a great time saver uh, for getting somebody set up and kind of ready to take orders in your shopping cart. Uh, if you if you kind of have your system uh, or your setting with your photographer systematized, where you pay new photographers X and established photographers Y. And, you know, these are the, my people who can do Matterport. Uh, these are my people who can do drone. These are my people who can do photographers or uh, just regular photo shoots. So great way to get that set up as well. What do you think, Lila? I think I should probably talk just a little bit less as we go. And it's it's the power hour, right? We're going to be quick, quick, quick today. That's right. Thanks, yeah. Lila. Thank, thanks for the support there. <laughs> Appreciate the awkward <laughs> silence as I cruise through. We're going to set up one more thing to uh, on Carrie's account here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put in a phone number for her, and we're going to turn her on to get the daily text message. So the daily text message or the morning text message uh, is, let's see, once we save, I think it'll pre-fill here. Perfect. Uh, you can get you can set it up so that it'll send out a text message in the morning uh, to your team members on like what does their schedule look like for the day. So we'll set it up to send at 7 a.m. And so any day that she has a shoot, she'll automatically receive a text message in the morning that says, hey, your first appointment's at X time. Let's say that it's 10 a.m. And it'll give them a, a link to go and view their uh, daily schedule online as well, which kind of shows them locations they're going to need to be at, uh, who the clients are that they're shooting for. Uh, how much commute time they're going to need in between each appointment and, and all those kind of um, main things there. It's a really nice uh, feature just to kind of, just in case they had forgot uh, that there was an appointment scheduled or if they had missed a notification. So now we're going to go into Carrie's account. So you'll see we're set up uh, under Isabel, our owner's account here. We're going to go into Carrie's account and configure her Google Calendar. So we're going to come in, and now we're inside of the account. We're accessing this system as if we were carry camera, and we're going to app integration. Now, you can either do this for your photographers. If you manage and create all of their um, schedules or cal like Google calendars on your own, or if they are connecting their own Google calendar, uh, then they can come in and just authorize their account, and, and it'll take them through this setup step as well. And we're going to go ahead and give permissions to be able to manage our events. And for our calendar here, we will pick carry camera. And so here you, you'll see we've got a couple different modes. So you can just have appointment sync. Um, you can also have clients choose a day, but not the actual time. In this case, we're going to take full advantage of the smart scheduling and say clients are going to choose day and time of their appointments. For the next appointment offered, we'll say anytime that they order before 6 p.m., then we'll go ahead and allow them to order the next day. For Carrie, we don't need any limits, uh, and we want her uh, start time to be about an hour. So, so the start interval um, will be one hour. And what that does is basically if we say, all right, we're going to turn her on. It's the winter right now, so we can only shoot until about four. So we're going to say that she shoots from nine to four. And we'll just go through and set this up. So you can use mixed availability in here as well. So you'll see there's a little plus button to the right. You could enable that, and that would let you do things like have a two-hour break somewhere in the middle of the day because you've got something that you always do each week. When we're setting these up, this is kind of setting up our general week-to-week -week availability. If you do things um, like add in uh, an appointment onto your Google Calendar that's for like a dentist, or if you've got kind of a one-off appointment, as long as you put those on your Google Calendar, It'll just treat it like another photo shoot. So if it has an address in there, it'll actually calculate drive time and everything. Um, so you could take shoots before it if you wanted to. So really, this is just sort of your base schedule. And then if you have uh, one day occurrence type stuff, you can set those up in Google as well. All right, for drive time, we're going to leave this just to none for now. Uh, when we get into the shopping cart, we're going to turn it on so it'll use calculated drive time. And then this will actually change a little as it is. Okay, so... We're going to go out of carries and back into our owner account. And so you'll see that process that I did there uh, with the team member. You can also do with client accounts as well, where you can go in as a specific client uh, and access their account and be able to see what they're seeing as well. We're going to come in and set up Steve's 
Google Calendar account as well. So we can, when we get to the end and we're ready to place an order, you guys can check out what it looks like. So we're going to do Steve Shutter and day and time. We'll set him to tomorrow. And I won't worry about the daylight situation on this one. All right. So he is set up and ready to go. Oops. Say drive time, none for now. Okay. <clears throat> So now we've got our team members in, we're going to go through and do a couple more things that are going to get us set up so that we can start working on our shopping cart. So the first thing that we're going to do uh, is we're actually going to go and enable some sales tax here. So on the sales tax page, we have to collect it in our state for digital photography. If you're not sure if it's taxable or not, talk, work with a tax accountant. This is not uh, not financial advice. We're going to go ahead and set it to the automated uh, tax lookup. So what that'll do is it will um, check with a service that gives us the tax rates for the specific location and specific state and automatically applies them over to the shopping cart. So we're going to go ahead and set that up. Um, you'll see here that you can choose the states you collect tax in. Again, uh, talk with a tax professional for questions there. But if you're working in multiple states, you may or may not uh, be subject to pay it in all of the states that you're working with. Uh, but yeah, financial person can help you out and get that figured out. Now, let's see, is there anything else? I think we're ready. So we're on the shopping cart page. We're going to do a couple things. Um, we're going to do our shoots based on service areas. So we're going to go ahead and use service areas with Google Calendar Enhancement. What that means is for our photographers, we're going to go ahead and set up an area that they typically shoot in and for ourselves as well. Um, so if there's shoots outside of that area, someone can fill out a form and, and let you know that they have something that's there, but it isn't like sort of a general area that you book and schedule and let clients do that. The other thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna switch the drive time from a fixed time to a calculated time. So this means that each time that there's a new uh, order that comes in, as your client puts in that uh, property address, it'll calculate the drive times between other appointments that are already out there existing on your calendar and then on your photographer's calendar so that it uh, knows any times that it actually sets up that it will or recommends to the client that one of your photographers will actually be able to execute that shoot. We're going to do a few more things just to touch backwards here. So we're going to skip our products so far. We're actually going to set up a price tier. So when we go to set up some products, you'll be able to see what that looks like. We're just going to call it VIP clients. And we're going to leave it so that there is a price difference that gets shown on the invoice. So the name of this is just for you internally uh, to be able to set up. And we'll kind of see um, what, that, what that means here as well. And we're going to create a workflow task. We don't need promo codes in this case, um, but we do support them where you can give uh, like 10% off or $20 off. Um, you can set them up. There's lots of flexibility and functionality in there for you to be able to, to do that. For this workflow task, we are just going to do order review and delivery. Workflow tasks are really, really uh, powerful. And, and you'll kind of see as we get going here how you could stack them onto each other and, and really kind of keep, keep the task list of anything that's related to delivering a photo shoot or delivering other things to your clients uh, out and to, the, to your uh, team without having to track it through like a separate system to know what the status of a job is. In this case, we're just going to assign it to us as the owner. Uh, we're the ones who are going in and doing the reviews and the deliveries right now, and we don't need to add a payout for that. If you were paying like an independent contractor to do this piece, you could pay them per task uh, for that, if that makes sense in your case. And that's something that you can set up and do. All right, so we are ready to get our product category set up. So we're going to come in and we're going to create a new product category. We are just going to call this photography services. And we're not going to put a description or anything in here. You can upload an image as well. We're going to skip that today as we're kind of moving through. Um, but it really just kind of dresses up the cart and makes it look a little bit nicer. There are options to add example links and things as well. So you can really go through and do quite a few things to, to really just make sure that your cart kind of pops when a photographer or when a client goes on to place their order. Um, but in the sake of time today, we're going to skip a few of these. So the first product that we're going to get going here, we are just going to do 
a product that we're going to call basic photography. So here we're setting the product name. Uh, these are areas that your clients are going to see. So we're going to set a product description. And this is just a single. We don't need any quantities. If you sell things like um, virtual staging, then you might want to do might want to have quantity where they can choose the number of photos that they want to get virtually staged, things like that. Uh, we do support those modes as well. We're going to say for a basic photography, we're only charging 150 bucks. And we'll say that it's about a 50 minute or 30 minute uh, shoot here. And we want to do this just up to 2,000 square feet, anything over 2,000 square feet. And we're not going to offer up this basic product. You'll see down here is where we can choose if the product is actually taxable or not. So you can have a mix of products where tax is applied to some but not others. Uh, and also a status here. So active. You can also do active included by default where the system will just pre-check that for them. So once you've populated kind of the general information here, you'll see you can kind of work down the side. So we're going to go to team members. And it's already enabled for us as the owner. And that's perfect. We're going to turn it on for Carrie Camera. She can shoot this as well. And we're going to set her pay for this product to $75. And for Steve, he's a little bit more experienced. We're going to set him to $85 for this particular product. So you'll see you can choose the team members that you would like to enable or disable for specific products, as well as setting different payouts for them as you go. Uh, now we're going to talk, touch on the price tier. So we set up a VIP client. In this case, for these basic uh, packages, we already have a price so low that we're actually not going to take any uh, price difference here for our VIPs. And we're going to touch on product dependencies as we get a little bit further in this process. We're going to come in and we're going to enable this workflow task of order review and delivery. So this is an order level workflow task. You can also have product level workflow tasks where that workflow task is only attached when uh, it's a specific product and it's something that you want to do that's related to that product. In this case, with order review and delivery, uh, it's going to be at the order scope. So it'll just get added once, regardless of uh, how many products it's enabled for. And, and it's just to do kind of the final review. So anything that you just want it added one time to the order, regardless of what's ordered, you can make an order type. Uh, or if you have specific things that you always want there for a product that was ordered, you can make it a product type as well. All right, we're going to come in and we're going to do premium photography. We're going to set up a few packages here. And in this case, we'll go and look at a VIP discount for this particular product too. We're going to say that this is $250. Spend a little bit more time on site for these. We'll say an hour. And we're going to do these up to 4,000 square feet. And... So both these photographers can support this as well. We're charging 250. Uh, we'll up their payout here to 125 and 145. And for our price tier for our VIP clients, we're gonna knock uh, $25 off this price. So we'll make it 225 for them. Oops, forgot our workflow task. All right, I'm gonna do one more product here. It's gonna be a very similar setup. And then we're gonna do a couple um, additional products that are, oops, that are a little bit different. This is kind of the longest piece where if you already have your, um, your products and pricing set up, and if you're not making any tweaks as you come onto our system, um, this is a, this product, this process can go pretty fast as you'll see, I'm just kind of copying and pasting here as we go. And we're gonna leave this from zero and we're actually not gonna put a limit. We'll always show the luxury option. So if anybody would like to buy the nicer photo shoot, we will let them do that. We'll turn on, you know what, for this, we'll turn carry off. We'll say that only Steve and ourselves will do luxury shoots. And when Steve does a luxury shoot, we pay him $200. For our VIP clients, we're going to say that they only need to pay $315 on these shoots. We'll give them a little bit more of a discount and we'll enable our workflow task. All right. So, same thing three times, right? So, now let's go ahead and get to our other category that we started. We're going to make this one aerial photography. 
we're going to put a couple of basic aerial um, options in here. So for the aerial photography, we're going to name, make two products. One that's sort of a standalone where you'll uh, actually drive out and price it accordingly so that you can be able to do the commute and still get it uh, to go through. So we're going to say that this is... $175, actually we'll make it 150. 150 to be able to go out. We'll say that on site really is probably only like 15 minutes once you're doing the aerial. So 150 if they want to order it as a standalone and send somebody out. And again, Carrie's a little newer, so she doesn't have her drone license yet. So we're not going to send her out. And for Steve, we want to be able to cover his gas and everything, but it's a pretty easy shoot. So we're going to say $75 for him. And no discounts for our VIP clients. We'll still have our workflow task on here. Okay, so now here's kind of the uh, uh, something that's more fun. So we'll set up what I'm going to call an aerial photography add-on product where we're only going to show it if they're already buying photography. So in this case, they're going to be adding on some images. So it's still going to be that five to 10 images, but rather than $150, we're going to bring it down just to $99 when you're already on site. And we'll pick our icons here. Square footage doesn't matter. And we're going to go. So same situation. Steve offers it. And we're going to pay Steve the just a little bit less because he's already out on site when he shoots this. So we'll pay him $50 in those cases. And we're going to set up our workflow task. And now we're going to go to dependencies. And so in this case, we're going to say, all right, this is an add-on product. And we only want to display this product when any of these services are already selected. Now we're going to do the same thing to the aerial photography, except we're going to make it a dependency where it does a removal. So in this case, we're going to go to dependencies and we're going to say, remove this product anytime that these products are ordered. So what's going to happen on the shopping cart is the aerial photography where it's standalone and, and really it's priced at the price that you would go and drive to to be able to complete it. We're going to have that remove as soon as they pick another photography option. And then instead, our add-on product is going to appear. So that'll be fun to take a look at later. Uh, as we get going. All right, let's see. A couple other things here. We'll refresh this. And all right, so we're going to do our product detail questions. So these are questions that you can ask as you complete the order. Um, so you can set these up where you can ask uh, a question. Oops. You can ask a question every time, or you can ask them only if certain products are ordered. ordered. So say that they're buying um, a product that you want to get some more information on, then you can go ahead and choose that. But really, if it's uh, a question that you always want to ask, and that's the case that we're going to go with this time, uh, you can do that. And we're going to go ahead and just ask, a, is the home vacant? So see, you can ask uh, yes or no questions. You can ask questions where you give them a block of text for them to be able to, to pick, uh, to type into. You can also uh, answer list questions. So this would be um, like if you want to give them a multiple choice type of answer that's different than just yes, no. And you can choose if they're optional or required. In this case, we're going to go ahead and make these required. All right. I think we are pretty set up here on our shopping cart. So we're gonna do a few things. So we've got uh, some information. Oops, I didn't get an address in for our business owner here. So we'll get her in before we do service areas. And we'll also see here that we need to have a payment processor set up. So we'll go ahead and take care of these two things and then we're gonna move on and keep going. So for Isabel, we're gonna come and get her address set up. We'll just say that she's at West Main Street. Two oh one. And now we can go back business. Remember business is kind of one of your main navigations when you're doing configurations. 
And the other one, it's going to tell us, hey, you need, a, you need a payment processor to be able to accept payments. So we're going to click on this. It's going to take us over to the app integration page. You can actually integrate or uh, navigate here directly from business and then go over to the left. And in this case, we would set up a Stripe account. Uh, we're going to skip this step right now, uh, but you would set this up and it's really your Stripe account, your Square account. It's really easy to do. You just click that button and uh, it's going to let you, if you already have an account with either of these providers, it'll have you log in and connect it. It's really just a couple clicks. If you don't have an account yet, it's pretty simple to get uh, set up with either of these companies. They'll ask you information about your business and you fill out the form. Um, in both the cases, when you click the authorize my account, if you don't have an account, it'll let you get one started at that time. Okay, so now we're going to head over to service areas and get the areas that our photographers work set up. So for ourselves, we're going to say that we will do anything in, we'll do two areas. We'll do a 35 mile radius and then we'll do a 60 mile radius. So you can either do it by um, mileage radius, like what we did here. And so you'll see that it kind of populates these two different areas and you've got some options down below. So in this case, we're gonna cover, cover those two areas kind of by default. And for Isabel, we're not gonna do anything special here, but we are gonna make her priorities a little bit higher than the others. So we're gonna make her priority 10 and priority 11. She started expanding her team she really wants to dial back on her shooting. So for the auto suggestion, we're gonna, we're gonna take a step back just so that her team members that she's hired can start getting some more shoots. You'll see there are things that you can do uh, under advanced as well. If you want to choose the days of the week that you allow scheduling here, it can follow your default schedule that you already set up, or you can come in here and do an override to the days of the week. Um, you can't change the normal hours of work uh, at this level. Um, but yeah, it is possible to say, hey, I only work in this area on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's useful if you're trying to cover a large area and if you really break down um, your territories. So as we did there, we just did mileage areas. Let's go ahead and go back and we'll do carry. And we're going to do a mileage area for her and we'll do it just kind of small, maybe 15 miles. And then we'll add just kind of a, uh, an extra area. We'll say that aside from her normal 15 mile area, she will cover more. So when you do a simple area, you can come in and you can actually edit and change this. So if you click the edit button here, you can grab these and pull them over to set up the area that you want. So you can, you can change those. You can do that with the mileage area as well. Just it, uh, it sets up a pretty big, pretty big radius there's a lot as it kind of makes those shapes there's a lot of little circles to move around so it really just kind of depends on what you want to do uh, but we're going to pull this in just a little bit over here and that is good we'll simplify this a little bit if you right click on those dots it will remove them and it just kind of simply simple simplifies that shape for you so you can do a little bit simpler manipulation if you want with less points so over here on the base rate uh, and the per mileage, this is how you can set up some automated travel fees if you choose. Uh, so you could say, hey, I want to charge nothing when I shoot my normal 15 mile radius. But if I'm going anywhere in the red area, it's going to be an extra $20. Um, you can also do that per mile. It's going to be one way mileage. Um, so if Carrie was shooting from here to Hayden, uh, if we put in a mileage radius or, or a per mile fee of of say 50 cents a mile, it would always be from her home location to that shoot. Um, it's never going to be based like shoot to shoot, just because those shoots aren't always guaranteed to be there or on that day or in that order. And so it really, uh, the way that our system works with calculating the automatic drive fees by mile is always going to be from the photographer's uh, location that you add into their account, which could be, you know, a standard location if you have an office or it could be their home address, really whatever makes the most sense for you. Okay, we've got one more service area to add for Steve. We're gonna keep his real simple and just say he'll go 50 miles. And you notice the priorities here, right? So we changed um, we changed Isabel's, but we didn't change anybody else's. So Steve, anything that's in the blue area, he's gonna be priority one along with Carrie. 
And so they'll just kind of, it'll, the system will evaluate their priority, but will also evaluate other factors like where, you know, how far are they based on other jobs to that location, things like that. If we wanted Carrie to always get the first shoots, we could bump Steve to a priority too. And now it's going to prefer Carrie if there's an opening. So there's some uh, kind of intricate things that you can do in here to really set it up to try to get the appointments distributed the way that you want for your area. All right. As we keep going, we're going to do a few more things. So we've got our service areas in. Uh, as you're setting up your business, something that you may want to do is set up a, oops, a custom domain name. So here you'll see we've got kind of our app photography, but if we wanted to do something at our .com, like a, um, a subdomain, like uh, some people will do view.mycompanyname.com, uh, that domain name gets used for your order form. It gets used when you send out um, delivery links to your clients. So it's the, for the most white labeled experience, I recommend coming in and setting up a subdomain. When you add it, this configuration spot will give you all the information that you need to go over to your domain provider, like someone like GoDaddy or whoever you may have your uh, domain registered with and give you some instructions on how to get that set up. All right, here, we're gonna go over to email messages. So in this case, where you actually just want to scroll down, we're going to keep all the defaults. Um, you can change the email messages. So you could say like, hey, I, I want a, a different style of header here uh, or a different style of uh, subject rather than saying is ready. I want to say something else. Um, you can set that up. But today I'm just going to come in and do a verify email address. We're going to verify Ian plus webinar demo hdphotohub.com. So what this does is this gets it set so oops, that your uh, emails that are going out from you are actually gonna come uh, from this email address that you entered. So what happens is you're gonna get an email address uh, to that email that you put in just to prove that you own it. You'll be able to click a link and get it verified. So rather than uh, emails coming from system at hdphotohub.com when you email out to your clients, it'll come from the email address that you enter here. Once it's verified, there's a few other DNS things that will show you that you can set up to just to maximize the delivery so that it stays out of spam boxes and things. But I highly recommend getting this set up again just for that uh, kind of full white label experience. All right. We are going to go over before we place our order and we're ready for clients to come. We're going to do a few more things. So we'll set, set our header image while we're in here. And we'll save that. And we're going to go to the default settings screen. So there's a couple of areas in here that we want to hit. Um, since we're doing real-time scheduling, we're going to go ahead and allow our clients to reschedule on their own as well. And we're going to say, hey, as long as you are rescheduling one day before the appointment, uh, you can go ahead and do that online. Uh, otherwise, you can have them call them if it's within that day. You know, probably don't want to have people rescheduling too close to the appointment. That's why some of those settings are there but you can choose what works best for your, um, for your team. We're also going to turn on some automated communications. So we're going to go ahead and have the confirmation email send right away when the new order is placed. Since we are using that uh, smart scheduling where they can choose the day and the time. And we're also going to say, hey, we want to send a follow-up confirmation email one day before their appointment. And we want to send them a text message two hours before their appointment. So these are just reminders so that uh, your agent, your client is getting that information like, hey, don't forget you have a photo shoot. Nobody wants to show up and have a home not ready or show up and uh, not have the client completely and forgot that it was supposed to be a photo shoot day. So those automatic reminders are nice. We're also going to come through and we're going to say, yeah, we'll turn on the BCC. So any emails that we send through the system. So I'd mean like you send a completion email to your client or an automation uh, a scheduling reminder to your client. These will BCC your account as well. And, you know, you can set up uh, email rules and filters and things to have them go into folders that you want if you don't want to always manage them. But it's kind of nice when you first set up your account to turn that on just so you're kind of seeing everything that's happening in the background. And we're going to come in and set up some billing information. So we're going to say for new clients, we want to accept a deposit with an order. So you see that you can set up uh, where they have to pay with an order. 
Um, you can turn it so that the, it always invoices them. So you always bill them after the fact. But in this case, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on for a deposit. And you can set it as a percentage, but instead we're just gonna say, we'd like you to pay $50 when you book for holding your appointment. And then that just applies towards uh, their order. But as they go through and put that order in, it'll ask them to pay that $50. In this business case, uh, we've got a, a cancellation fee of $50 and that way we already have that money on account. Uh, we aren't gonna change any of the other default permissions here for our new client accounts. But for billing options, there's a few things that we want to do. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on funds on account to be redeemed. That would be like if you had a client who uh, placed an order, if it came through and got and uh, canceled because of the listing sold before it actually went live or before you came out and did the uh, photographs, uh, you can go ahead and cancel that. And they may say, hey, I've got another one that's coming. It's almost ready next week. I'm gonna put that order in. If you want, you can go ahead and leave it so you've got accounts funds uh, that your client can use rather than having to do a refund to their credit card and then get it billed back in. We're also gonna turn on the referral program. So this gives your clients a referral code where they can enter and uh, set it up so that they can spread the word about your business for you. We're gonna say for anybody that comes in from a referral, we're gonna give $50 to the person who refeed them, uh, referred them. So what that means is once that new customer who signed up with your existing customer codes completes their order, uh, they your new customer and it's paid and delivered, your new customer uh, or your existing customer rather is going to get a $50 bonus and that'll just be as on account funds for them to be able to use. Kind of a cool program that you can use to promote and uh, make sure that your agents are promoting your services to other agents. Say they've got a new, new uh, realtor in the office who they bumped into in the uh, in the kitchen, they may tell them about your system if they you know got their first listing and they're so excited and, and they say, geez, Cheryl, I just love your photography. It's always so great. Who, who does that for you? They can spread that word for you. We're also gonna enable tips on the order. Uh, up to you if you wanna turn this on for your business or not, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna have it pay out on the product, but we're gonna do 5% back to the business for this, the administration here. And so here, the, the tip amounts to suggest, you can set up dollar amounts or you can set up um, percentages. We're gonna do dollar amounts, whoops. We're gonna do dollar amounts in this case. We're gonna say, hey, you can tip us $10. We'll say $25 or $50. Maybe your photographer did an outstanding job and somebody really wants to show their appreciation. All right, let's see. One more thing here. Since we're doing a deposit, we're gonna turn on that clients pay when the order is complete. A um, couple other things just to note, we're not gonna enable them while we're here, uh, but there are MLS compliant settings that you can turn on. So if you're using uh, the full marketing kits in your area, you can enable these to make sure that they uh, meet the MLS restrictions. Um, well, most of these handle what's out there for the MLSs, but if there's something strange in your area, go ahead and let us know. And we'd be happy to look into if that's a setting or something that we can enable. All right, so we're gonna turn that on and we are ready to place our first order. So we're gonna go ahead and set this up. And we're gonna say our client called us and we're ready to go. We don't have any clients added yet. Uh, when you're getting started with us, do feel free to email our support team. Uh, if you would like us to do a client import for you, we'd be happy to do that. Um, you can just send us a spreadsheet and we'll get them set up in, into your business so that you are good to go and your clients already have an account. So if they visit the order form and enter their email address, they will be all set and ready. All right, so we're going to create that client account. Actually, we're going to do it right during our scheduling process. So we're going to do a new real estate site for the client. And we're going to say that this is just at 1234 West Main Street, Main Avenue. You'll see um, Google will help us out with some quick search on the address there when you use that top bar. And then it's going to confirm that that's uh, located where you think. And so in this case, we're gonna say, we've got a new client and we're just gonna say that the client is Bob Smith and we know their phone number. 
and it's going to require their email address. And if there was a referral code, if you knew, uh, you know, if Bob reached out and said, hey, Cheryl told me to check you guys out, you can enter in that uh, client referral code and set the referral as well. Okay, so we're going to head over to the order form and we'll be ready to go. So here when we click, so you'll see order form, basic delivery and simple site. Um, well, I would always recommend putting in order for a site. That way you've got kind of a tracking of anything that you're charging the client. Even if you weren't uh, maybe, you know, if, if you aren't charging them anything, uh, you could do it without charging. But I would, even in those cases, I would, I think it would be good for being able to track who was there, uh, when you did it, I would still order it. And then you can add in a product afterwards to make that product free or just represent that you did it for free on that particular shoot. If your clients ever wanted to go and check it out, or if you change the price, um, there's lots of flexibility you'll see as we start this order as the, as the uh, business owner or a team member placing the order rather than the client directly. All right, so we've got our address information already pulled in, 1234 Main Street, and we've got our setup of our shopping cart that we started earlier. So we're going to go ahead, and if you remember, we put in some restrictions here based on square feet. Now, you do have the ability to set make square foot uh, a required field. In this case, we're not going to do that, but we're going to enter a value here so you can see what happens. So I'm going to make it 2,500 square feet. And when we do that, you'll see that the basic option actually disappeared because we don't offer that really on properties that small. And so now it's gone and it just shows them the two relevant options. Now, another thing that you'll remember is we had our aerial photography add-on product over here. So when we choose the premium photography offering, you'll see that this automatically updates over to the add-on product because it's hiding that product that was showing and now showing us that add-on product. So you'll see it go from 150 down to 99 because you're already going to be out on site, which is a nice uh, nice thing to do on some products where maybe you would offer it up at a different price if you were just adding it onto a photo shoot that was already there. You also see as an owner, you have the ability to go through and choose um, any products that maybe aren't displaying or if you want to create a custom one-off product, you can go ahead and do that as well. So that's just a nice little bonus for you guys. In this case, we're showing uh, each photographer and they're going to choose the photographer that they want as they uh, place their order. You can also have this uh, in, in like a hybrid mode where it'll show any available, or you can actually have it automatically skip this section. And just based on the location and the other information that's already in the system, it would send out uh, the notif or it would automatically choose the photographer that makes the most sense for that particular shoot. So you'll see when we choose our photographer here, uh, the system is automatically suggesting some appointments. In this case, there isn't any other information in the system. So it's saying, hey, do you want the first appointment of the day? Any of these next three days? Are you ready to go get this thing shot right away? Now, if they uh, are, if none of these work for the client, they can say, no, go ahead and show me the schedule. And what else is interesting about these suggestions is that it will update. So as you do get more information into the system, it starts to understand uh, the drive time in between these appoint appointments. It understands what else is on your schedule, if you're priority for the area or not, particularly in the automated scheduling mode where it isn't necessarily uh, already set to Steve, but it could be to any of your photographers. This is really helpful because it's going to keep your photographer's schedule efficient um, while kind of weighing all the factors of who typically serves this area, does this client have a, a photographer preference that if they're available, we'd like to get it to them? You know, how soon is the appointment? You know, if somebody's really booked out, then then those are kind of kind of all be factored in, and they'll get uh, some automatic appointment suggestions here, uh, which typically work well for the client, and again, work really well for your photographers as well. So we're gonna say now, show us the show us the schedule, and you'll see here uh, we've got all the different time slots that can be picked, and we're just gonna say you know Friday at one o'clock looks great. Let's get that going. Uh, if you are placing an order for a client and you don't have the scheduling yet, you can actually just choose to skip the scheduling when you're placing the order and it'll leave it uh, unscheduled and then you can reach out to that client to get it set up. So here we're going to see our home details. So is the home vacant? We're going to say, no, it's not. So now you'll know that uh, expect that home to be lived in. Hopefully it'll be nice and ready and maybe no homeowner home while you're there shooting, but 
you know, we'll see. And because we're charging sales tax, it's going to ask for the billing information for the client. We're going to say that they are at West Main Street, Spokane, Washington. And there we go. And that would bring in that taxable uh, information if we had that product turned on for tax, which I think maybe I turned that off. Uh, but it, but if you charge tax on any products, it will ask for that billing information right, right away. If you don't have it for a client, you can skip the billing information and it'll use the uh, property address as the information just to get that going. You'll see also while you're placing orders for clients, you've got some advanced options down here too. Uh, because we don't have our credit card processor hooked up, You'll see the order total. It just says, send me an invoice. If we did, it would go ahead and ask us for that $50 up front for the deposit. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get this placed and in the system so you can see what happens next. So as this order is getting placed, a few things are happening. So your client's getting an email confirming the order. Um, because we're doing the actual uh, real-time scheduling, they're also getting a separate email from the order confirmation. That is the appointment confirmation. It's going to confirm the address the photographer assigned and everything. Uh, your photographer who was assigned is going to be getting an email, uh, letting them know that they have a new shoot and what was ordered, who it is, when it is. Um, so lots of different notification things happening. Also, the Google Calendar integration, uh, it's going to go ahead and automatically create that event on the Google Calendar and have it ready to go. So here you'll see the orders created. Um, if things change about the order, it's really easy to come in. You can choose different products for the order. You could change the pricing for the order if you'd want. Um, you can cancel, you know, if order gets canceled, you can cancel uh, kind of all the normal things that you would need to do uh, for just order, order management from a day-to-day -day situation. Uh, also noteworthy, so when Steve completes the shoot and marks that as done, uh, that will get ready to release his payout so that you can run a payroll. The system will automatically track your payout amounts. It's more of reporting uh, for you, so it doesn't do any fund transfers or anything like that, right? We don't touch the funds. It's all just uh, to the payment processor that you set up. Um, but you can use it for payroll tracking, which is really great because you get the line-by-line -line detail of what is owed and what it was for, what shoot it was, when it was shot, so all that information. So we're going to go ahead and say, all right, this is ready. We're already past the 20th. Steve went out and shot it, and we're good to go. So Steve sent the photos up to the editors. We got them back, and we're ready just uh, so you guys know, we do have some integrations with companies um, like Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, also some specific editors like eSoft, uh, where you can actually get the uh, images automatically loaded back into this spot. So it's a really cool thing um, that, that you can have automatically happen. And so basically, you can skip this step where it's going to do an upload. So in, in the case of the Dropbox integration, let me just show this a little bit as that is uploading um, some of the setups here. So you would go under business and then uh, app integration. And when you authorize your Dropbox account, it gives you a few different options. So you can, you can get it set up so it'll automatically create those folders. Um, you can also set it up so that there's a spot here where your photographer can visit and click to upload their unedited images. So you can kind of have that delivery back and forth between your photographer and your editor really seem uh, streamlined and all just through a white label experience. I uh, wish we could have shown that today, but not quite enough time in our power hour to, to get all the way through that process. But it's, uh, it's a pretty neat feature that makes the, the actual execution piece really, really simple here because the photos are already in, particularly if you're outsourcing editing and it's coming in overnight. Uh, so now that these are uploaded, we're going to go ahead and say, hey, we want to sort these by just the normal media. And we're in the good order. You can drag and drop uh, to sort these as well. Um, if you want to be able to see a little bit more of the photos, you can do that. So you can adjust the sizing. If you have floor plans, you can upload those here. We also do have a direct integration with Kubicasa. So if you uh, are using Kubicasa to capture floor plans, you can have it automatically pull in from their system as well. Um, site attachments. So this would be like PDFs. Uh, uh, other things that you're adding, you can actually upload video just directly to the site media area, which is what I would recommend. That way your client will get an option to download it in a couple different sizes. Uh, embedded media like Matterport, Zillow 3D, all of those um, you can add here. You just enter what you want to call it and enter the URL for that. 
and then you can choose if it's on branded or unbranded information. Okay, so we've got the photos in and we marked this as done. And so once this was marked as done uh, on Isabel's dashboard, it would actually pop up so that she it would notify her that she's ready to do the order review and delivery. Um, same thing, it also sent her an email letting her know, okay, all the other tasks are ready. So if there were a couple different pieces to this order, maybe we were still waiting on like a Matterport link to come back, you may have a workflow task that has that piece in there. So kind of as workflow task get, uh, as everything before workflow task gets ready, it will automatically email and notify those customers or those team members, excuse me. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and head over to the site activation and Hey, Lyle, will you do me a favor? Will you pop onto this account in uh, the system and add some credits? I don't think I put any test credits in here since I started as a brand new, brand new account. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm thank you. It. Yeah, perfect. I'll just explain a little bit about what some of these different options are here. So as you uh, get over to the site activation page, you'll get to choose if you want it to be uh, to go live now and do a full marketing kit and media delivery. And so what that means, uh, you'll get the marketing kit as well as the download page for the client. So the marketing kit is going to have all sorts of uh, marketing goodies in there, social media graphics, social media videos, flyers, a property website, um, with lots of different options and editing options for each one. And those are 15 credits. We'll talk about the credits and how the pricing um, in our system is done here in just a second. So you can also do the same thing for a marketing kit uh, where you can buy it, but actually not have the property website go live. So it isn't to the point where it is all the way, all the way publicly available. It's just ready for your clients and there'll be a one button click for them to be able to go ahead and make it live. And then uh, also there'll be an option for a delivery down at the bottom. So if you really just need to send them a page for them to be able to get and download their media, uh, they'll have that option to be able to go in and do, and but no extra marketing uh, information. There, Ian. You've got credits. Yeah, we're good. Credits are good. Yep. Perfect. So in this case, we'll just go ahead and go live now. Do the full purchase. Lila, you are amazing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So now this is on and we can finish up this process. So now that you've made the purchase on our end, uh, you can get ready to notify your client. So we're going to go ahead and say we're going to preview and send that site completion email. So here you'll see it'll pre-fill their email address. Uh, you can also have it pre-fill uh, other email addresses. So if they have an assistant, they always want CC'd. If they have um, like a marketing manager that they need CC'd, you can actually set that up at the group level so it can apply to multiple agents at once. Uh, you can come in and edit this subject. You can also change this default text here as well. Uh, you'll see you got your branding on here. It's got a photo of the property, letting them know they're good to go. Uh, links to the property website, links to the marketing kit. So something that's noteworthy here on the marketing kit and the photo delivery URLs, you'll notice they're kind of long, long URLs with all sorts of uh, letters and numbers and not guessable at all. Um, so what, what those do is they actually make it so that your client doesn't have to log in to be able to go and access those sites. So if they get the this link and it's got... Uh, you know, all this stuff in it here, they can actually just click the link and they're good to go uh, to be able to go and access the download page, get what they need and move on. That way they don't have to remember what email address do I have set up? What the heck's my password? How do I get in here? And that way you're avoiding those uh, kind of tech support calls of let me help you get into your account. And instead you're out shooting and servicing your clients. You'll see that uh, the referral code that we set up uh, will be reminded. They'll get a reminder in here that you have that program available to them and it will let them know what their code is that they can share with other clients. Also, if they haven't logged into their account before, it'll it will give them the option to go ahead and just set a password, right? This is a brand new client that we just set up at the time of the order. Um, so when they get this delivery email, they'll be able to go in and set up a password if they want. Really the main thing for logging into their account, if they wanna look at like a purchase history, they can do that. Uh, if they need to go do something with a pass listing, then that's a, that's a good way for them to go. And, uh, you know, maybe they need to go grab one photo from an old listing to, to do a promotion that they're up to. Uh, pretty easy for them to go in and get in. You can also choose to send a text message at the time of the delivery. So you can just say, hey, your photos are ready. Go check your email for instructions. Also, if you edit your own photos and it's one of, you know, one of those days where it's really late at night, you don't really want to send a client an email at 1 a.m., 
uh, you can go in here and schedule it for the next morning to send We say, hey, we want this to send at seven o'clock uh, tomorrow. But in this case, we'll just turn those off. We would just hit send now and the client now has the email. So for a couple things to show you guys here. So now that the client is in, uh, we're gonna go over to the marketing kit. So here you'll see uh, there's a preview of the property website. There are some more property website designs that they can choose from too. And you can set the default that you would like to use. Uh, in this case, it's just using this design here. So here we'll open that up and take a look. So it'll have the agent's name. If they had a, a picture in here, they'd be good to go. If you grabbed a picture before the delivery or if you, they log into their account and upload their own. Uh, so their information's in here. Has some information about the property. I'm going to link over to the photos and be able to send them a contact contact form and map as well. Again, there's a, I think we've got about nine different designs here. Um, and they've got some different uh, colorways in them too. So the client can kind of match it up with their brokerage brand or their own brand if they'd like to. See on the marketing kit for sure is a quick and easy way for them to be able to go and download their photos as well. We're going to come back to that in just a second. Uh, they've got a flyer that's uh, being pre-selected here. They've got some social media graphics. So these are great for um, like reels or TikToks uh, where they can use a couple of these to create a reel if they want or use it to in an opening reel before they can maybe talk about the property. So these are all pre-designed and ready for them to go. You can actually click and edit uh, these as well. So say they didn't like the Honey, I'm Home text here. They can come in and make this something completely different. Or maybe it isn't uh, the way that it's positioned doesn't work well for the particular photo and they want it somewhere else. We'll say we can put it down here. Uh, lots of different options and things in these where they can come through, uh, change things. They didn't like this. Uh, maybe they want to get the peak of the house in there. Maybe they don't want to use that image at all. How about we use this image? And we can do some repositioning where we'll get a little more of that chandelier. And good to go. And so now that's set up and ready. Uh, super easy for them to be able to go in and uh, make some make some changes, really customize it to be able to share out onto their uh, social media. Uh, there are also, yeah, so you'll see lots of different options here graphic wise. There's also videos that are being created. So as soon as the as soon as you create the um, property, those get created. So they've got, Usually takes well, maybe about 10, 15 minutes for the video to get processed and created. So you'll see this one isn't quite ready, but typically by the time that your client uh, is in there, after they get their email, those are all good to go and ready for them to access. Um, we're going to go over to the download page. Uh, you'll see that uh, this business, we did set up a copyright early on uh, before, before we logged in. So we've got a copyright in there under their details. It's pulling in the client's name, uh, it's pulling in the photographer's name, and pulling in the property address to really say like, hey, you know, you can, you can make it really specific to that property, to that agent. You can use a generic copyright. It's really up to you. Um, and you can also set it where they have to accept it before they access this page, or you can make it so it's just there. So anytime they download photos in a zip file that they're getting the uh, a text file that contains that as well. But here they can come in and download their images. So you can download them in the zip file format. Um, you can choose this size, uh, this size as well. I don't know if you caught that on the when we were in default settings. So whatever the size that makes the most sense for your particular MLS, uh, you can set that up in here ready for them to go. Also have the ability to choose just a few images and download those as a zip file rather than all of them. Uh, when they do the all images, it does come with any... Uh, floor plans or anything else that uh, you added. The only thing that it wouldn't come with is if videos on here, it'll have them download that video separate just so if they just need the photos, they don't have to also download a large video if it's uh, if it was like maybe a longer walkthrough or that style of video. All right, I think we uh, we went pretty good there uh, from, you know, a nothing account to all the way through client ordered a shoot and we delivered it back to the client and they were able to get access and download their photos. Uh, I am gonna show you guys our pricing. A couple super quick report pages. I know we're gonna be just a couple minutes over and then we're gonna touch on uh, any questions that you guys may have that already hasn't been answered in there. So really quick on the reports page, 
Um, you'll see there's quite a few different reports in here. So you can take a look at um, what's already been scheduled. Uh, so you, you can look past orders, future orders. You can pull that on a daily um, or weekly basis, whatever makes sense. So if you're needing to get some access to that, um, there's a lot of order reports. Uh, this one has just a ton of detail. So basically almost everything that's tracked in our system about an order you can pull out of here. Product performance reports where you can go and review those quarterly or annually, however however often you would like to get a sense of, you know, what are, you know, you probably know your main products, but what are the add-on products that are really performing or what, you know, really see it summarized and brought up. Um, you can also pull a mileage report. So you can see uh, in this case, what do we have? That shoot was on the 20th. So we're in the future here. We're kind of tricking the system, but we'll pull it up and we can see that Steve had to, he had one appointment that day that he had to drive almost seven miles to. Um, so if you are interested in knowing what the mileage for your team is, you can come and pull this. You can also get a more detailed version of this directly in Steve's account where you can really see it like shoot to shoot. Um, there's a lot of good information on these reports. Uh, that's where you'll get your sales tax information when it's time to pay that. Um, and then also for your team member pay, we have a special page for that one. So you can come in, you can see if you're going to run payroll today. Uh, you would owe Steve for one job, and if you click into it, it'll actually tell you which job that was, how much it was paid, and so you can commit those just so each time that you run a payroll, you've got a nice new report, and your photographers can actually log into their accounts and see that as well. Okay, so pricing. Let's go and take a look. So you can purchase credits from us in bulk um, or one at a time. If you're purchasing credits one at a time, it's just a dollar a credit. Uh, I mean, we give a 20% 20 20 discount if you just buy even as little as $120 uh, worth of credits up front. Uh, and, you know, once you're really using us, I, I would say you should at least be buying at that level. Uh, might as well get that 20% 20, 20 So that's 10, 10 marketing kits. Um, yeah, it ends up being, uh, being a really good value there. It's about, I think it's $12 a marketing kit uh, and a little bit over $3 for delivery. If you get into this level here where you're doing... You know, maybe you're doing 50, 100 homes a month. I would, I would for sure say you'd probably want to buy up at this level where you're getting kind of a maximum discount uh, before you really jump up into those high enterprise uh, level purchases. So here, a marketing kit's going to cost you $10. Uh, a delivery is going to be $3.33. Uh, and we, so we have a credit system and built as a per property, really to make sure that it's a win-win. So one, we don't do subscriptions, uh, right? Obviously, your usage is going to vary a bunch depending on the time of year. We're in the slow time now. You can imagine you wouldn't want to be paying the same price for a subscription that you would be paying in, in June when you're really, really busy. Uh, also, as you're just getting started, if you don't have a lot of shoots, again, it's a great way to just make sure that it's always in alignment. When you're out shooting, that's when you have an expense from us. Uh, it also keeps us motivated to want to be able to bring tools and support for you to be able to do more listings in your business. The more listings that you're out shooting, we know directly impacts uh, what you're using in our system and when we get paid in our system. So we just have great alignment there where we're always doing whatever we can to, to really help you go and get more shoots or help your business be more efficient so your photographers that are already shooting can have more shoots in a day. Uh, yeah, we, we, we just think it's a great model because it keeps everybody aligned and wanting to, wanting to do the right things and motivated to, for everybody to be successful. All right. Sorry for running over a little bit there. Lila, do you have some questions that the audience wrote in? Um, yes, some great questions, actually. Lots and lots of questions. Yay. Um, somebody wanted to know if we have an onboarding service to assist people in configuring their sites. Ooh, great, great question. Good pick, Lila. Um, yes, we absolutely do. So we have uh, what we call an account specialist. If you guys have uh, worked with us much so far, you maybe have talked to Shay. Um, you can write in and get a uh, an appointment scheduled with Shea. He'll ask some things about your business and kind of make scheduling recommendations as you go through. We do have quite a bit of options, uh, uh, quite a bit of flexibility in the system, right? Not all photography companies are the same, and that is fantastic. That's why services like ours exist. So yes, absolutely. Um, you can get something scheduled. There isn't a cost to be able to do that, and he'll help you uh, get set up for your business. You can just write into our support team to get connected on that. All right, let's see. Uh, this one is for Jake. I do a lot of short-term rentals out of state. Is there a way to create a service area within surrounding states yeah. that will allow me to do individual pricing based on location? 
Yeah. So if it's if it's you shooting them still, it's a little bit uh, different. But yeah, in the service areas, you can set that up um, where they they are actually in different locations. Or if you have team members that shoot in those different locations, that's really the easiest way to have it. So in our case, we'll say if we also shot over in Montana, we might have a team member that lives over there. If they lived in Great Falls, they can have a service area completely separate than uh, Isabel's service area. And you can also have different products that that team member serves on their own. So again, when we go back to our shopping cart area, let's say that you had um, short-term rental, rental products in here that were specific to that location. You could come in and say, hey, only, only my Montana photographer shoots those products. And what the system will do is when somebody puts that uh, property address into the, into the order form, it'll first look and say, you know, who's available team member wise to shoot in this area. And then what products does that team member offer? So if you have a location where maybe you have a Matterport camera or you've got drone photographers, but you open a new location and you don't have all those services available, another benefit on that location, um, location-based products and services where it actually won't suggest those right away. If it's you who's doing the shoots and like you travel to do those, um, I would say you could maybe set up a different team member account for those specifically, just so that it functions a little differently. You can still set up those service areas, just the scheduling. I think you'd want to have a little bit different. I would say that's kind of a more of a special, special case. If you're traveling between like, you know, longer distances, state to state, if it's not just like bordering states to be able to do that. Something else that we didn't cover too, um, you can have product, product filters. So at the beginning of the order, you can say, hey, is this for a residential shoot? Is this for a short-term rental? And then you can, um, based on their answer, show different products for that particular shoot. Uh, yeah, based on what they chose. So lots of flexibility there. Okay. Um, can the photographer make notes in a job? Mm. Yes, absolutely. So when you get in order... Uh, you do have order notes that you can enter as well. So the uh, if you ask any questions or if you leave like, sort of a comment area for your client to fill in, their first notes will come in when they fill that out. After that, this section's uh, completely reserved for you and your team. So any notes that go in here, your client won't, uh, they don't see this view on an order. Um, when they come to this page, it's, uh, it's slightly different. They really just see kind of this information here. They're quick tools and all of this stuff is left off. So this is available for you to be able to write notes back and forth between your team. Uh, we also have what we call a quick note functionality back there on the shopping cart that we uh, breezed over today too, where if there's common notes that you or your team add, or if you want to have like an email go out when a certain note is added, you can have those set and they'd just be like little buttons here to click and it'll, it, uh, yeah, it's really handy and efficient. Um, okay, this is a good one. Can we have non-job events show up on the calendar? We like to have our staff meetings, trash days, and such, so we don't double book. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you, a couple different ways to do it. So here you could say, hey, we need to have our team members off. So as the business owner, you can choose any team member. Um, when your team members are on their dashboard, they just see themselves. But you could say, we're going to take uh, Isabel, Carrie, and Steve all off this day. And now, even though it's available on the um, kind of their normal default schedule, this will override that where they're going to have this Monday the twenty third off uh, again. And and if it's if it's anything that's like not a full appointment, so say it's like a half day or a couple hours for a training or something like that, best way to achieve those would be to create a Google Calendar event um, and then just invite their the calendar address that that they use with you. Uh, so it'll put an event on there, like you know, just like if you're adding a dentist appointment or something like that. Um, those personal events that come in on the shoot calendar, it will avoid those uh, just like it was another photo shoot. Yeah. Well, I think those are kind of the big ones. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we'll yeah. do, we can do an export of those questions and reach back out to people too if we still have some that are unanswered so we can get you guys uh, questions. Also down in the corner, there's a little chat uh, for our help uh, team. We've got Lila Runs, a great support team. Uh, we've got people on chat, people on phone. Uh, also, you can visit help.hdphotohub.com uh, as well, or just visit support and click on Help Center. It's a really great help system where you can really type in uh, any any keywords, 
and see all sorts of different um, walkthroughs. Some of them have videos, lots of them will have screenshots and it'll take you through the process. So if there's something that you're kind of wondering more about, definitely keep that help center handy and uh, type in the keyword on that's of something that's on that page and, and you'll get some support in there as well. Yeah, our, our customer service team is awesome though. So if you get the chance to interact with them, I'm sure that you'll be very pleased. Lila's a rock star and so is her team. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Appreciate uh, you running a little after with us. Hope everybody got uh, the information that they were looking for. But if not, again, just reach out to us. We're happy to help. And thank you so much for checking out HD Photo Hub. Have a great day. Yeah.